thank you very much, everyone, for joining us this morning for our Q2 May Day product update. Really, really excited about everything we've got to cover today. So without further ado, let's get into it. Just a quick uh, intro. My name's uh, David Tuck. I'm the co-founder and CEO uh, here, here at May Day. And I'm delighted to be joined by, by my co-founder, Griff. Uh, Griff, over to over to you. Hi everyone. Yeah, so I'm Griff. I'm co-founder and CTO here. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna dive in, but um, I'm gonna invite questions as well. There'll be a Q and A at the end. So please, if you've got any questions, do drop them in the in the box, and we'll get to those at the end of the webinar. So yeah, uh, to start with, let's have a quick look back at Q1. Um, so the first thing that happened in Q1 was we launched Bragg, which is our bank reconciliation across the group. Um, and the idea here is this allows businesses with multiple entities to reconcile payments and revenue to bills and invoices that exist in other entities in their group. Um, it was great to get this out. It eliminates loads of time um, and also the risk that a bill could be paid twice. Um, so it's been really great. We've had some fantastic reviews from our customers on it, and it's been really ple pleasing to see these come in. Um, Emma Donathorne at Immutable said it reduces the time spent reconciling transactions by at least 40%, which is huge. Um, and MJ Fig at OG Global said to us, the way that it's built on top of Xero's bank rec interface makes it such a joy to use. So it's been really great Q1 for us to get that out, um, get customers using it, and get that fantastic feedback. We also did some work on Recharger, um, notably a brand new notifications page that will notify you when there's late transactions in a month you've already run your recharges for. So that will tell you, for example, you know, January needs to be updated and you can just one click go in and update your postings in there. We also introduced a new uh, transaction review page with a very different look, uh, much more information, but hopefully a lot easier for people to review as well. Um, so that was really great to get out as well as some updates to the postings pages, such as being able to batch change tra uh, tax treatments. And then we also got our third product, Made a Balancer, into beta. So I'll hand over to Dave now and he'll take you through that. Uh, amazing, thank you so much, Griff. And, and yeah, it's been, it's been an incredible uh, quarter uh, with, with Bragg uh, exploding kind of onto the scene as the, the second of our trilogy of, uh, of intercompany and, and multi-entity products. And without further ado, the, the third installment of that trilogy. So, so Mayday Balancer, and I, I'm just, I'm so, so excited about this and, and our ability to you know, put this in the hands of, of Zero using multi-entity businesses, because just on a personal level, you know, as, a, as an accountant and, you know, former like finance leader, like been there and, you know, you hear so many war stories about keeping into company loan accounts in in balance. And I always remember, you know, explain this to someone who's not from a sort of an accounting and finance world. And you think, well, it's really simple, right? You've got two entities. What entity A is owed by entity B is the same as what entity B will show that owes entity A. It's really simple, right? But but those who've kind of lived it know uh, know how different that that kind of is in uh, in reality. That intercompany loan accounts can, can so easily all out of balance due to transactional pasting asymmetry between the two entities due to where there's fx involved 200,000 pounds might have equaled $220,000 when that sterling loan was was made but now due to fx differences actually 200,000 pounds equals just over like $230,000 and therefore we need to put that fx adjustment through so that we can consolidate out those loan balances and then the final one where interest is uh, is involved and to make sure that that can be easily posted symmetrically across those those two entities. And yeah, it just it, in my experience, it always bites at the worst time at year end. You know, when you're going through like a transaction, a funding event, and you end up spending literally days of time unpicking every single transaction in the loan account to find that culprit so that you can put Humpty Dumpty back together again with those loan accounts in balance. So I'm just so, so excited to be able to introduce you to Mayday Balancer. So let me just share my screen. So this is really, really exciting. This is now the constant 
checking of your loan accounts to see that they are in balance. So you tell us the, the relevant loan account mappings with the, the account codes. And so we can then constantly check whether the two loan accounts are in balance. We can highlight the variance. We can highlight the transactional discrepancies for you to be able to drill into, to find out the culprit, to rectify any posting asymmetries. You can then easily post any necessary FX adjustments to keep those loan accounts in balance. And then finally, the ability to set the interest rate that's going to apply to the loan, and then one click easy ability to post those interest adjustments. So if we think, you know, how are we going to be able to post those FX adjustments? How are we going to be able to post the interest? You know, very similar to how easy it is to post the depreciation in zero. It's going to be that easy to post the FX adjustments and the interest adjustments for our intercompany loans to keep them in balance. So this has been just phenomenal work by the team and like phenomenal like feedback that we've got from our amazing range of, of beta users who've uh, who've put Balancer through its paces. Griff, I think I'm, I'm right in saying that, you know, if we take the beta users that we had for Recharger and, and Bragg, who were amazing with their feedback, I think we've had, you know, we've had more um, more beta users Balancer kind of than, than those two products combined. It's been absolutely amazing to be able to get that feedback. So we're so, so excited that Balancer is here. It's it's in the hands of, of Mayday customers uh, now delivering delivering value. Uh, I think we've got we've got an amazing record so far for identifying uh, some some asymmetries with our BT users, uh, Griff. And, and and after you know perhaps a little bit of surprise, uh, I might be right in saying on their part they have then gone off and found that actually uh, Balancer has uh, identified uh, that kind of asymmetry in their loan accounts, and they have then. Uh, addressed it which has been which has been absolutely amazing the value we've been able to deliver there and in 12 days time the 16th of may that is the day for the full uh, balancer launch that we're, we're really really excited about and never again do intercompany loan accounts need to fall out of balance amazing well that is mayday balancer and that is what's coming up this quarter and the release on the 16th of May. So stay tuned for that. Also coming up this quarter, some incredibly exciting updates to Bragg, Bank Reconciliation across the group. So Griff, back over to you. Cheers, yeah. So Bragg, as I mentioned earlier on, is really great at reconciling income or payments when the invoice or bill exists in the other entity that you want to reconcile against. But if that doesn't, if that invoice or bill doesn't yet exist, then there's not much you can do without going in there and doing that. Obviously, Zero offers a really nice way of doing this with the Create tab, where you can create, you can say which contact it was, what account it should be reconciled to, and give it a description, uh, tracking categories and tax rate, and so on. So what we've done is we've taken that and we've put that in the Mayday tab. So if the invoice or bill doesn't exist, you can go into create, you can select which of your related entities we should be posting into, and also how much we should be posting into that related entity. And then you'll have all of these fields as well, the contact and account code and so on. But what that amount field means is you could also reconcile multiple create transactions. So those could be in different entities as well. So if the payment relates to multiple things that need to be created in different entities, you'll be able to do all of that from within the Mayday tab, right within your zero bank rec screen. So that's really exciting. It's so, so cool. And we're so excited about, about this. Like Bragg has had a phenomenal impact, effectively the, the multiplayer version of, of Match uh, within the, the Zero Bank Rec. And you know, we, we've seen like multiple um, from times from users where the, the Create version is run. I was speaking to a user the other day who they have a, a Plio card uh, and they, you know, they often use that for items of expenditure on behalf of, um, you know, other entities. And the, the amounts are relatively modest and therefore there won't be a bill in those cases to match to. And so it's so, so exciting now that we, yeah, we have the combination of both match and create on a multiplayer brag level. 
Fantastic. So that we, we've covered Balancer, we've covered Bragg uh, and, and the exciting, uh, really exciting update that's coming with the, the, the version of the, the Create tab this quarter. And then finally, the other the big thing on our on our roadmap this quarter is so, so this is the, the product vision that we have uh, that we published late last year and you can find on our blog. We have been focused on the multi entity side of things in the top right with Mayday Recharge of the Intercompany Charges, Brag, which we've just been discussing, and Balancer, which is launching officially to the public on the 16th of May. But our, our vision is to mend month end. And so we're really excited to cross the threshold this quarter into pain points that also affect single entity businesses as well as multi-entity businesses. And we're going to be starting with revenue recognition. So Mayday RevRec is going into beta this quarter, which is so, so exciting with the ability to automate the identification, the calculation, the logging, no more spreadsheet to log every single item that you've applied, in this case, deferred revenue treatment to, so that you have that single source of truth as to what your deferred revenue balance on your balance sheet is made up of. It's such an exciting new product release for us. And I'm gonna hand over to Griff to just take us through some wireframes. So RevRec, where we go this quarter, and starting with the deferred revenue element of RevRec uh, as, a, as a precursor to moving into the accrued revenue side subsequently. Fantastic, yeah. So we've got some wireframes here of what we think this product will look like. So a quick sort of overview of how it will work. So the first thing we'll do, we'll obviously pull in all of the invoices that you create in your, in your entities be that a group or be that just a single entity. And those that we think have uh, should have revenue recognition applied to them will surface for you on this dashboard. And with one click, you can dive into it and you can say, hey, you know, how, how are we going to spread this? What we will have done is picked out the lines on that invoice that we think require revenue recognition applied to it. So in this case, the annual uh, license there has, has had it applied, but the implementation charge has not. If you need to override that, you can. We'll also have proposed a revenue recognition plan for this. So we will have told you how we're going to spread that payment over the months for the next 12 months, because this is an annual plan. And again, you'll be able to change that and edit that if you need to. But if everything is fine, with one click, you'll be done. That invoice will have had the treatment applied to it. And at any point, you can come into the revenue rec uh, deferred revenue balance here, and see what your deferred revenue balance is made up of, both at this point in time, but also what it's going to look like in the next few months and how we've released the payments for all of the invoices that you've added. So this will be coming, we'll be building this out throughout the quarter, um, looking for beta users. So if anybody's interested in helping us out test this later in the quarter, please reach out, that would be absolutely fantastic. Amazing. So, so excited about this, you know, replacing that process of manually reviewing transactions at month end to identify those that require deferred revenue treatment, removing the process of needing to calculate what the treatment should be, and removing the process of, of needing to go and log that in the single source of truth as to what my deferred revenue balance is made up of. So, so, so excited about this. We've got a great question that's come through from Kevin, actually, which we'll pick up now. How would RevRec identify potential deferred revenue invoices? So great question, Kevin. And, and uh, Griff, I might hand over to you to answer it initially, and I, I can kind of chime in with any other thoughts accordingly. Yeah, absolutely. So we're, we're hoping to use some of uh, some of our, my background in AI to do this. So obviously looking at the descriptions that, the, that you've set on the invoice. So for example, an annual plan would suggest it, 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 it needs to be spread annually, but we'll also be looking at patterns within customer behavior. If you frequently invoice this customer every quarter or you receive you know, a, a quarterly bill or whatever it is, then we can use that to recognize that perhaps it needs to be spread over the quarter, for instance. So we'll be building out some test data, building out some algorithms and testing that over the quarter to, to try and make sure we can hit as close to 100% as possible on this. And that and that's, I think my only point to add to it would be that, that's our North Star, 100% 
automatic identification of all of the deferred revenue requiring items. And you know, there's a there's a good analogue there with Mayday Recharger, right? With your rules of, you know, hopefully they cover 100 percent of your recharge situations, but every now and then there'll be an outlier which you'll want to override and, and apply a different recharge treatment to, which you've got the ability to within calculations. You know, same, same principle for us when it comes to identifying those requiring deferred revenue of you know how how close can we get to that 100 percent north star but you know you'll also have the ability to pick out any other ones that are outlier transactions and apply the deferred revenue treatment to them such that you're saving that time from calculating and you get to easily log them within your deferred revenue balance as well all right amazing so that is everything that we plan to cover uh, today. I'm just checking in the, the chat to see uh, what other questions we've got. Okay, yeah, we've got a great question just come through around what's the timeline for, for Brag Creators? Yeah, clear uh, there's yeah, there, 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 there's a lot of um a lot of appetite here. So we're still we're in the final stages of development with that. So it'll be going into testing hopefully next week. And then perhaps the week after that'll be ready for us to ship it out for customers. Amazing. And then final question that, that I've just seen come through, because I'm conscious of we do these as a quick coffee and uh, coffee and chat with uh, with Mayday to find out what's coming up. So final question is, what happens with Revrec if I change the invoice or post a credit note to it? Yeah, amazing, amazing question, because that's the you know, that that's the other potential banana skin, right, with uh, with, with Revrec, revenue recognition today. There's the first one of, well, I might miss the transaction or I might kind of human error miscalculate it. But there's also I could do everything right. And then what happens if that invoice changes or a credit note gets posted to it? And I need to then go and remember to go and change my revenue recognition treatment accordingly. So that's the thing we're really excited about. You know, we'll have the ability to identify the transaction that has had the, the deferred revenue treatment applied to it and then see if it changes so that you can one click approve in the same way the necessary deferred revenue adjustments and, and same principle in the event that a credit note gets applied to that invoice. So that's the other area of value we're really excited to deliver with saving you, you know, a huge amount of time and any kind of scope for human error on the front end. But we're also providing you with that safety net of if things were to ever change, we will pick those up for you and enable you to easily apply the relevant adjustments all right fantastic well look that that concludes our uh our latest quarterly product update session so, so thank you very much for everyone who's who's joined this morning and thank you for everyone who's who's watching this video after the the fact it's it's a real privilege to be able to continue to bring product to market to be able to address your month end month end needs and let's get back to building and we look forward to seeing you again next quarter thank you very much thanks everyone